Welcome all summon. In my last video I spoke about what substance did the Vikings use to get to their wild, ferocious, berserker uh, state in battle. So I mentioned that uh, scholars think most likely it was henbane that was used, um, uh, but in this video I'm going to speak about specifically how they ingested it. Now this can be smoked, eaten, brewed in a beer, used as an ointment, uh, many different ways have been used to get these uh, effects of this magical plant for actually thousands of years, going all the way back to ancient Greece, but here we're going to speak about what the Vikings may have done to achieve their berserker state. This is not advice, don't go try henbane. It is legal and used medicinally, but it can also kill you in the wrong dose, so definitely see a doctor if you wanna try it. Don't take my word, this video is just for historical purposes. I'm trying to uncover some things, and as usual, we use the old sources here instead of just making things up. Uh, we have dozens of mentions of berserkers in the sagas, and other medieval texts, but you know they're all kind of distant and they don't go into a lot of specific detail about the build up into this state. It's kind of just a berserker showed up in town or a berserker uh, fought in a battle or something like that. But we have two stories actually that do go into detail about the build up to this state, detailing the events that led up to this berserker state. Uh, uh, only two. The first one comes in Gesta Danurum. Uh, now this source it has been confirmed to be basically the biggest bunch of bullshit of all the medieval sources, uh, with clear lies. Uh, the main storyline we know is true for the most part, but the details are, are definitely lies based on other reliable sources that we have. But anyway, here's the text. I mean, of course, you see here the swallowing hot fiery coals and eating embers, that's probably not true, but from the previous events in this story, it's clear that this guy was normal, talking in a conversation, being diplomatic, and then he worked himself up into this berserker-like state during this conversation. It probably would not have taken more than a few minutes to go from totally normal to this state. Uh, the only other example we have of kind of being worked up into this state. I'm not even sure if it's actually a berserker state, but they work themselves up to into a rage in Egil Saga. And in this story, uh, Skallagim and his father Kvelul were fleeing Norway, away from uh, King Harald Fairhair actually, and they were gonna settle in Iceland. And I think, uh, I'll, put, I'll put all the stuff up here, but they stopped in Scotland and docked up in the harbor, basically, for a pit stop on the way to Iceland. And they saw the kings, I don't know if it was a brother or a cousin or one of his men, I forget. And then they decided as a one last fuck you to <laughs> King Adult Fairhair, and as a goodbye present, they would kill this king's man and the whole ship. They were working themselves up into this furious type of frenzy-like state, and then they attacked the king's brother and his men on their ship and slaughtered them all. Uh, so it doesn't, of course, it doesn't go into detail about what they did to build up to this berserker state, but it does go over the course of time, and um, it wasn't more than 20-30 minutes, probably, that, that they took to build up into this state. Also, a very important clue is that it was normal to feel weakened and ill for many, many days after this. Kvelulf uh, here almost died on the rest of the journey to Iceland. He was a, he was a grandfather after all, total badass and fighting like a berserker. So uh, this gives us some clues again. It was a spur of the moment thing, and they got ready to fight, and they were up in this berserker light state from totally normal to berserker state in not that long of a time. So this is not mushrooms in either of these cases, guys. If you eat some magic mushrooms, it could be two, three, four hours before you feel the effects at its highest. That could be possible if a berserker had to, you know, plan for his battle. He say, the battle's tomorrow, okay, let's, let's go out and find some mushrooms and we'll brew it in a tea in the morning and uh, so we'll be ready for battle. But in uh, these cases that I just went over here, it proves that it was not mushrooms at least in uh, all the instances. So it could be henbane, like the scholars. I agree that um, uh, it, it was most likely henbane based on the effects. The question is, how did they ingest it? They didn't eat it because same thing, it would take too long to feel the effects. So if they did take henbane, it would have been smoked 
or possibly drank in a very concentrated form uh, with some ale or meat or something. That's the only way you would be able to feel the effects that quickly. I'm not aware of any archaeological finds that the Norse had any smoking tools at all. We don't find any pipes or smoking tools in Scandinavia until, you know, hundreds of years later. And there's not any records of smoking in the literature either. Smoking is something found definitely in other parts of the world, even Europe, by tribal people, but uh, not Scandinavia, so they probably didn't smoke henbane. But I'll say that the ancient Greeks used henbane by lighting the seeds on fire and inhaling the fumes. It was specifically the oracles that did this at the Temple of Apollo. So this is probably the method that was used um, if one didn't have any pipes or smoking tools. The account in Gesta Danurium actually does mention the berserker jumping over the fire and doing all this stuff with the hot coals and embers. Maybe it wasn't coals at all, maybe it was henbane seeds. Don't know if it's possible. It's also possible that uh, they had some sort of secret mead recipe that they mixed henbane into and got their uh, effect very, very quickly. Uh, we do know that a lot of our myths reflect on some very real rituals that humans did. One of the ones that pops up the most is some sort of initiation ritual where the maiden would offer the hero a drink of mead. Uh, there's a great paper online about that. I'll put a link to it below. That's. Uh, <clears throat> that's all free um, so yes we definitely had a sacred mead recipe that brought some sort of spiritual awakening and initiation and it definitely could be used for battle um, from some of the myths um, we don't know this recipe of course nobody wrote this down anywhere but what we do know is that it would make you feel horrible and weakened and sick for many days after like i mentioned so do with that information what you will i haven't taken any <laughs> drugs or had any drinks that have given me a three-day hangover but let me know if anyone has any experiences uh, I know especially in Germany, henbane was used in medieval times, we have records of that as uh, used as a flavoring for beer, and still those recipes are, are in use today in some places, it's called Pilsenkopf. Uh, so that's possible, haven't tried, but hope to one day. So smoking, it was possibly drank. Um, another noteworthy uh, thing is using henbane mixed as a salve. We have records of witches doing this, mixing some herbs together as some sort of salve or ointment. This is a few hundred years after the Viking Age, but if you put this on an ointment and rub it on thin spots in the body, it can be absorbed by the sweat glands and you can feel the effects that way. You don't have to eat it or ingest it. You can apply it to your arm spits, but the witches, we have stories of them applying it down there. So the witches would actually put this on their staffs in pagan times. We, we have records of this in court cases, um, and uh, staffs were very, very illegal in Christian times. So what they did after staffs became illegal, they used a broomstick, and if they would rub it, they would take the broomstick, this is my axe, but let's pretend it's a staff or a broom, they'd rub it all around down there, <laughs> get stoned, get the effects of henbane, and... Uh, uh, this is the story of the witches on broomsticks that we all uh, hear of because when you take henbane it makes you feel like you're floating or low on gravity. So the berserkers could have also done this. Uh, I will leave you with one also super cool thing that I noticed that kind of points to this. Um, a lot of these extremely ancient rock carvings. Uh, we see a lot of these figures who look like warriors fighting, but they were sitting on a staff or something like that. These are not witches, they are clearly, clearly warriors, you can see them with weapons here. Uh, some of the historians say that these are, <laughs> this little stick that they've got on the, on the figure, that these are cocks and they're meant as fertility symbols. Uh, we don't have two cocks, <laughs> with the second one coming out of our ass. So no, this is pretty clear that these warriors are sitting on something that looks like a staff. So. Is it possible that this is what berserkers use, the same type of method as these witches? These rock carvings are, you know, from thousands of years ago, long before the Viking Age, and before really the main migration to Scandinavia even. So historians think that this is what the Asiad Vanir War was, the two tribes of gods, that they were actual uh, real tribes of people. The native tribes in Scandinavia were the Vanir, who were more focused on fertility and nature worship. Then the Asiad came in from further south and these two cultures had a clash 
and have turned into the early Germanic tribes. Uh, we do know that the Valnir were considered more sexually shameful than the Asir, and they were also the originators of Scythed, and taught this uh, art to Odin and the other Asir. So, Scythed was considered a feminine, shameful art. The Verva, or witch, basically had to take her staff, <laughs> Take her staff, put some salve on there with henbane, get up on stage, rub it all around her puss, and, and start dancing around like a like a maniac, and get to this trance-like state in order to uh, give her prophecies. But um, a guy would have to do the same thing, except he'd have to stick it up his ass, which is why it was so shameful for men to do this. So it's possible that the Vanir tribes did this in their battles before, and this is exactly what we are seeing in this rock art. But then the Asiad came in and basically took over Scandinavia, just like we read about in Heimskringla and uh, the Prose Edda. And they learned this art from the Vanir. They used henbane and perhaps some other substances to make them ferocious in battle. But if they didn't use the stick, they would have said, Ah, oh, fuck that shit, I don't want to run into battle with a stick up my ass. That's, that's gay. The Vanir did that, but the Asir are too proud to do such things. So then they maybe decided to take henbane or these other substances by drinking it in a brew or inhaling the fumes. I don't know, It's uh, we can't say for sure, but it's just a theory that connects some of the missing pieces, but that's just my theory. Don't take my word for it. Let me know what you guys think. Any other evidence? Parallels from other cultures? Did I miss any? Um, uh, mentions of berserkers from the sagas that kind of speak about this build-up. Um, love to hear any things that you guys have, but that's all for today. Vi ses nästa gång.